Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time you are joining me, I want to thank you for joining me in this next episode of Unwrapped Legacy Media and Computers. Do have a special of guests in this episode. We have Callie the Calico and I'm sure Tuffy the Tuxedo Cat will get in shot at some point in time. So if you've watched Unwrapped episode number 35, that one was on the IBM Pro Printer X24E that came from Computer Reset the weekend of January 22nd and 23rd. The rest of the boxes are here. So of course, not going to take a, um, not going to unwrap everything in the boxes, of course, but are going to open the boxes and show you what I did find at Computer Reset and what we will eventually actually unwrap on the channel. So again, thank you for joining me in this episode and uh, let's get started. Started with this box right here. Some OS2 software. Thank you, Sergio. When we do finally get the 286 going, or if I can find a PCAT, we'll get OS2 installed and give that a whirl. This, I believe, is IBM, IBM, Microsoft Word version 5.0, an update. I actually haven't looked inside that yet. Now, the second day going through, or my second session going through Computer Reset, we did find... What I think treasure trove of things that had been buried for a while, but the four volume set of the Xenix software development system. And I believe, um, I don't remember which because the, the volumes aren't numbered. This is the software command reference. Actually, uh, I thank Sergio for these um, because he doesn't have a 286 and I do. It's in storage right now. I'm just waiting on getting a graphics card for it. The Xenix operating system for the IBM PC. Um, this is the command reference for that. Now, this is separate from the development kit. This is all part of the OS itself. This is the installation guide. Oops, sorry, you can't see that very easily. The installation guide, system administration, and the visual shell. The floppy disks are in this volume. And then concluding with that box, um, this was something else that I found shrink-wrapped. The Macro Assembler version 2.0. Of course, that comes on three and a half inch disc. And uh, that finishes that box. Let's just put this over to the side. The, the cats will get a hoot out of that. And... find my knife and we'll open up 
this box right here. The, this box really took a beating on the on the journey from from Garland, but everything uh, it made it. Nothing uh, leaked out of the box. Okay. So, some other good things that we found at Computer Reset. There were a lot of boxes with, you know, what most in our circle call, you know, the cartridge, or sorry, the cassette, large cassette cases. Found accounts receivable training edition. Learning DOS. This requires the personal, or sorry, the private tutor 2.0. Rocky's Boots from by the Learning Company, which I'm kind of surprised that's not mech. Um, I did happen to score a couple of copies of Learning DOS just in case the media is not good. I can get uh, good copies. A couple of copies of Andrew Tobias. Managing your money with the IBM PC Junior. And Sergio and I had an idea because this is a combination of cartridge and floppy disk software. If there was any way we might be able to get a cartridge to load on an IBM PC. Not sure if that's possible or not, but if you have any ideas on how you could make that happen, please go ahead and post in the comments. Turtle Power Activity Book. No media, but as you see, it's for, you know, use with the IBM Turtle Power program. Maybe we'll run across that. Teacher's Quiz Designer. Then something I had been kind of looking for for a while. Um, the first copy I ever received, I did get from Sergio, but it was like, it was kind of neat in the sense that... Uh, if I could find more copies of it, Data Encoder, which was actually IBM's first foray into data encryption on the IBM PC. There is a video that I did of this. Go and check it out. So yes, a couple copies of Data Encoder, a couple copies of Rocky's Boots. Also... Um, copy of IBM PC Junior Color Paint. And then, um, a couple that, uh, not exactly entirely sure what they're used for. They're in the IBM programming family, but the Easy View Editor and the Easy View 2 Runtime Facility. Yeah, some of the some of the copies um, did not fare too well in the warehouse, but you know, a little little elbow grease and maybe some rubbing alcohol will get that cleaned up, no problem. Right. Got IBM Assistant Home Solutions, IBM Assistant Accounting Solutions. IBM Planning Assistant Solutions. IBM Assistant Executive Solutions. So I ended up getting a couple of copies of Planning Assistant Solutions. Actually, quite a few extra copies, it looks like.
So you might hear, especially because it's been a couple of years since Clint of LGR did the initial video that there's nothing left. Well, I can tell you, even though it's been a week and a couple of days since I have been in Garland, Texas at Computer Reset, people say, oh, there's nothing there. There's nothing left at the warehouse. Rubbish. There, there, there is. And in the volunteers reshuffling around of things that are at the warehouse, there is stuff that has been kind of shuffled and kind of forgot about. And some of those are shrink-wrapped copies of VisiCalc. VisiCalc 1.20, the IBM branded version in its binder. Now, I'm always about the, like the... I do like the IBM Assistant series as I'm always looking for uh, good copies of that. So we've got some IBM Planning Assistant here. IBM Writing Assistant version 1.01. I happen to have version 1.0. I'd like to know what the difference is between 1.0 and 1.01. We'll find out in a later episode. We have this version of Top View. Punctuation skills by Testmaster. This also needs a private tutor. And then this really big binder software. A little slightly water damaged, but this is data edition. And you've seen me on the channel do a couple of videos about this. And essentially, if my understanding is correct, that IBM took some of the software from the big iron and you know, brought it down to the personal computer level. And this is the base product that you need for all the extra stuff. And then I think this is inventory accounting edition. I think we do have other versions of this around. Um, you actually need the IBM Business Ledger for this, even though the system requirements don't say that you do. And we'll find out when we get to this, uh, get to that episode. And this concludes the second box. Three more boxes to go. I did forget one other special guest. The uh, generic robotic vacuum is out and about. So, might see it. Might not. Okay, let's open up. If I can find what I did with the knife. There we go. We'll open up yet another box. So IBM graphing assistant, some Caesar's Palace, haven't opened this yet, but uh, it's suspected that this is actually for Macintosh versus PC. I guess we'll have to wait to find out. Here we have Microsoft Word 5.5. And I was kind of surprised that I found this. Um, Clint, I doubt you're watching this, but uh, you were in the warehouse, and I did happen to give you a shout-out when I stumbled across this, this Hardware Maintenance and Service Manual 1, 2, and 3 for the Personal Computer AT.
payroll edition. And I did happen to snag a couple copies of this just in case the media. And here's the other box of the Xenix operating system. Thank you again, Sergio. Once we get the 286 going, this is going to fire that up and test it out. And hopefully it won't be uh, too much of a stickler about running on a clone 286 versus a IBM PC AT. Um, now, in one of the boxes in the warehouse area, there was a large box filled with these... IBM Financial Branch System Services Discs. They were just all kind of thrown in there. There looks like there was a lot of them. I don't even know if I got a complete set. Probably not. But what was important about these? Like, why did I want to grab these? Because they were 720K, 1 meg unformatted, 3.5 inch floppy disks. Which... In this good of condition, they're really hard to come by. Um, unless somebody happened to snag that entire box, there should be plenty of those left somewhere, hopefully. And who knows, maybe if I can pull, a, um, put a complete set of this together, we can do an unwrapped episode um, on that. Some other things that I did find poking around the, the software collection. IBM's uh, version of the Java Virtual Machine, which I don't know, I thought it was better before uh, Sun sued them uh, to get rid of it. Internet Explorer 4. Found some Microsoft Map Point. Although this did take a little bit of a beating in transit, but uh, the disc is intact. And then upstairs on the U-Haul side, but this this stuff has has been moved. Is it looked like demonstra or uh, wow? It was a game kit for uh, Mitsumi CD-ROM drive kit. We had, you know, Internet Explorer 2.0, which includes the tutorial. And then here we go. And even says, you know, manufactured by KAO from Mitsubi, but the games for Windows 95, playable trial versions. And then the Mitsumi CD. whoop de doo right? I did grab a couple of those. This looks like the, yes, the additional copies of Payroll Edition. <laughs> I'm, I'm very curious to see uh, what all the this will be about with those and This concludes this box. Two more to go. Let's open them up and see what we see what we can find. And look, there goes the robotic vacuum. Wow. I forgot how heavy these were. I wonder the post office put on these red stickers that these were caution heavy, 35 pounds and over. Yes, we really did pack this one full, didn't we? All right. So, we have the PC Host File Transfer and Terminal Emulator Program. 
thought that was pretty neat. Been looking for this one for a while. Only was able to find it on eBay and it was stupidly priced, but we did find it. IBM Drawing Assistant. The IBM Mainframe Communication Assistant. Anybody got a System 36 in their house they want to hook their PC up to? Another of the, the four of the Xenix software development. This was another big find for me. I was super happy to find this. Shrink-wrapped copy of Logo. And no, I didn't grab them all. Only grabbed a couple. The asynchronous, you can see it, communication support. Another shrunk wrapped copy of VisiCalc 1.2. Parts two and three of the Xenix development system. This much heavier binder is the software development guide and this one here is the assembler reference. Was able to find the Top View Programmers Toolkit version 1.10. And also out in the warehouse in a box was Top View version 1.1. Now, I'm not 100% sure, and I'm hoping really inside this box is version 1.12 in that this version has PS2 mouse drivers that are native for top view. You don't have to do any special modifications to files or drivers in order to get a, uh, a mouse to work with top view. And this concludes the fourth box. And now we're just gonna do the Final box. And watch the cat attack the boxes. Okay. What do we have in here? All right. We've got another uh, cassette. Uh, spelling skills, a little beat up. But that's okay. It's not like we don't have extra cases. Some not IBM software, but I wanted something early network technology. And this is the... 10 net local area network system a software upgrade version 3.2 of course they probably had their own a network interface card so i'm not sure how useful this will be for an up unwrapped episode but we'll unwrap it at that point and uh, see what happens i have the IBM 3270 workstation program, I guess, for emulating a 3270 uh, terminal. And does anybody got a 3270 in their house that they want to hook up their PC to? We now have the hardware maintenance and service manual for the personal computer graphics printer and the personal computer compact printer. We have another uh, shrink wrapped, shrunk wrapped copy of IBM Reporting Assistant. We have Hardware Maintenance and Service Volume 1 for the PC, I believe. PC Network Hardware Maintenance and Service. Oh, 
Wasn't sure if I did or not, but it looks like I ended up getting two copies of PC Host File Transfer and uh, Terminate Terminal Emulator Program. Trunk wrap copy of the guide to operations for the personal computer AT. There were quite a few of these. The DOS technical reference, which covers DOS 2.1, 3.0, and 3.1. And then the last piece, uh, there was actually a box full of these, but it looked like a Spanish version of the technical and looks like the shrink wrap came off in transit but it looks like yeah the spanish version of the technical reference for dos 3.3 does it include the floppies no floppies in here it just looks like the instructions and there you have it folks that's all the boxes on wrapped there's not enough gratitude to and for noel raymond kevin all the volunteers i sure <laughs> serves you for helping me uh pack and get this stuff uh shipped here uh, back in the northeast so uh, once again, I want to thank you for watching. This is one of the longer unwrapped videos, but I hope not boring because the action was pretty steady. What would you like to see unwrapped from this haul first? Uh, please comment uh, in the comment section uh, below. Any questions, any other comments, please feel free and Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Unwrapped.